So uh, we're starting call to order the uh, Transportation Advisory Board January 8th meeting. Uh, I'd like to do a roll call. Chair Lehner. Here. Board Member Bennett. Here. Board Member Wicklin. Here. Board Member McInerney. Here. Board Member McKee Burroughs. Council Member Yarbrough. Okay, the next item is uh, we need to, uh, of course, appoint and have an election for the vice chair. I guess we'll open up the floor for any nominations. I'd like to nominate board member Wickland. Just checking to see if there's any other nominations. Otherwise, we'll ask for a second. I'd like to nominate somebody. Um, board member McKee Burroughs. second myself <laughs> I'll second board member McKee Burrow. So I guess what we can do is uh, we can have uh, both give us a little synopsis and or a little campaign speech. Is that acceptable? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll start with Taylor or Board Member Wickland. Sorry. Well, th this is awkward. Um, <laughs> uh, well, you know, I'm, I'm happy to fill the position um, as the pretty much interim vice chair because the nomination was to go again in June of this year. Um, you know, I've already been part of TAB for a year and a half now, and I'm also part of the Bike Issues Committee, um, chair of that committee, and then uh, also very involved in the community, So, and I will always stay involved whether I'm vice chair or not. So thank you. Um, so I've been on TAB since, I guess, July, I think. So a little less time. Um, I'm also part of the Bicycle Issues Committee. I am the secretary for the Bicycle Issues Committee. I'm also going to stay <laughs> really involved. And I'd be happy to accept it. And but I'd be also happy to have board member Wickland also take the position. So I'm happy to take it or not. So um, we'll go ahead and go, uh, I guess, around the, starting with uh, board member Bennett and have your vote. I vote board member Wickland. Uh, I will vote for myself. And I will vote for board member McKee Burrows. For board member McKee Burroughs. Uh, 
I am the deciding vote. <laughs> um, I will vote for <laughs> um, myself, I guess. Okay, uh, looks like we have a vote. Um, Council Member Yarbrough does not vote, I don't think. So, um, do we need to do anything in terms of a second? Is Since we've done the vote, we're good? Okay. Yeah, next time we'll get that. We'll get that going. Um, so the next we go to approving the minutes of the preceding minutes. Um, any corrections or comments to the minutes? I have a couple. Um, the first would be to correct the date in the header of minutes pages two through nine. And the second would be, it's more of a clarification really. Minutes page five, line 21 reads, microtransit, which will be a formalized Uber Lyft system for Longmont, end quote. So um, I'm guessing that Lyft would not be L-I-F-T, but rather L-Y-F-T. But I'm also wondering whether that's a, an, an accurate representation of the statement that was made. And if it is accurate, my question is, is it likely that Uber and Lyft are going to be the city's contractors for microtransit? Well, they very well could be. I mean, they could, they could certainly bid on this if they want to. But we're going to make it um, you know, a third-party contractor it won't be the same type of system as Uber and Lyft today as, as far as drivers being able to just sign up as they want to and dictating the, route, the, the rates by however many drivers you have. We'll have a company. The plan is to have a company that will have a set amount of drivers and vehicles. And the vehicles will be owned by the company and the drivers will be paid by the company. So it won't be... The Uber and Lyft was really meant to describe the type of system, an on-demand system. So I think you're correct in that we don't want to say the, the words formalized, but it'd be like, it would be microtransit, which is a form of Uber Lyft type system. If that makes sense to yeah, you. Thanks that, for the clarification. Sure. Anything else? I would just uh, inquire if it would be better to instead say rideshare system or if it's just clearer to say Uber Lyft. Yeah, I'm good either way. I mean, however you feel is best. So we should just change it then to, if we're all in agreement, uh, microtransition, which will be a form of ride share for Longmont. Does that sound correct? And not mention company names. Perfect. Okay. Great. With nothing else, I guess we'll need a, um, a motion to approve. I motion that we approve the minutes. I'll second. All those in favor? Okay, Phil, you're up. Thank you. Um, some communications from staff. We have a few this week or this month. Uh, first, just wanted to start. We do have the legislative breakfast tomorrow morning, so bright and early in Boulder at the Glen Miller Ballroom. If you've uh, already RSVP'd and have a ticket, please attend. <laughs> that would be wonderful. Um, um, otherwise, let us know if you are wanting to go, and we can still get you in probably. So if you're 
interested but did not sign up originally. Uh, it's, it, uh, it's, it's a little t I don't know if they're sold out yet or what, but uh, um, let me know and we'll try to figure something out. It's going to be tough uh, at this time <laughs> of night to figure that out, but I think we could still get you in, so let me know. Um, also, just to give you a heads up, we are planning to do um, a Kaufman Street outreach for the current project from 1st Avenue North to 9th. We're planning an outreach event at the library on Wednesday, January 31st from 5.30 to 7. And then, if you're really excited about things, uh, all things transportation, the next day, we're doing a transportation mobility plan open house at the library, February 1st from 5.30 to 7 at the library. So uh, come join us for both events if you can, uh, especially the TMP, I think. The Kaufman Street is really more of an outreach to the local businesses and, and more of that uh, information more related to construction, but we certainly like to see it both. But I understand our schedules are all pretty tight, so just want to let you know that. And then finally, um, our winter bike to work day will be held on February 9th, which is a Friday. Uh, that's a 7 a.m. to 9, 9 a.m. event. We'll have a breakfast station at the... Development Services Center somewhere, either along 4th Avenue or along um, Kimbark Street. Uh, either it'll be at the De Development Services Center, which is the older courthouse building on the corner there where we all work. So um, we're thinking about doing it at the Creation Station, which is that 4th Avenue entrance, just as a, like a warming area for people as they ride up. And so we're not sure about the weather, of course, but if it's anything like today. Uh, we'll certainly want to bring you inside and warm you up. That's all we had for communications from staff at this time. Unless you had any questions about any other activities you've heard about and want to know more about. Great. Oh. Same time, 5.30 to 7 p.m. at the library. And that's the Transportation Mobility Plan. First open house... We're really hoping to kind of kick off the event to the public at that at that um, you know, open house event. Okay, um, we don't look as if we have any public invited here, so we can move on to the information items, or the I should say the action items, right? So the proposed work plan? Right, we do have one action item for you tonight for you to vote on. And we would like to uh, make sure we get an approval either with or without um, recommendations from the TAB. So let us know what you think. But we did s hand this out in December. I know a few folks were not available at that December meeting, but we did want to make sure we got the work plan out for 2024 so you would be able to look it over and just check it out to see if you had any corrections. At the time of our December meeting, you did have some, or the TAB did have some comments. So we wanted to incorporate some of those. And one of them was, um, and we've tried to highlight all the changes that we made from last year. So all the yellow highlights are kind of things that we know about now. One of them is the February meeting. We will have RTD peak service study uh, presentation to this group. So we're looking forward to that. That's going to be above and beyond the typical, you know, RTD download of all the information, all the data, ridership, where they are with um, other elements of the of the planning process. So this will be a little different and, and very much specific to the peak service study and so they can explain to you where they are where they are with that and how we're working as uh, as partners to get that thing going and off the ground or on the ground I guess so it's rolling along the ground. Um, also we want to have a front range passenger rail so that's separate. So the peak service study is is something very much related to Commuter rail, something very much like the A-line or the N-line uh, that's already existing uh, in Denver. And uh, bringing that as maybe three trains in in the morning, three trains out in the afternoon, RTD's kind of replacement of the Northwest Rail, which was promised to be more of 55 trains a day kind of thing. So um, front range passenger rail is more of, a, of an um, Amtrak type service. So that's one of those ones where it's more intercity or intracity. So it's really trying to move people between the different cities from Fort Collins all the way down to 
Colorado Springs and probably basing or hubbing in Denver. So you might have to switch trains if you're going all the way to Colorado Springs. Um, but there's still a lot to be, there's a lot of unknowns with that. So we do want to have them come in maybe, maybe in the April, May timeframe and talk to us a little bit more about that and nuanced difference between the two systems. And uh, there's a lot going on there and they may have to go to a vote uh, of the district. There's a district that's already been formed along the whole front range. And so they may have to go, they may be pressed to go to a vote in 2024 to start taxing that district. And we wanna certainly say things like, hey, we're paying a uh, fast tracks tax already. So how are we going to work that into uh, what you want from a, from a front, page, front range passenger rail district. But I don't want to give away the punchlines, of course, but anyway. I also changed the, mobil the transportation mobility plan to ongoing because we're in the mix, midst of it, mix of it now, so we'll keep that going. And then um, enhanced multimodal plan, um, that's kind of moving into the transportation mobility plan realm. So there's a lot of things that are going to be taken up by the TMP process. Enhanced uh, multimodal plan is part of that. You'll see that EMUX, enhanced multimodal um, uh, multi-use plan or multi-use corridors are gonna move into that as well. So there's a number of the things that transportation mobility plan is gonna take over that have been kind of these, these smaller sub plans before. Then we're gonna move um, 2024 CIP project updates as a quarterly item rather than just be once a year because there are so many things as we discovered last month with Jim's update that there's so many moving parts to these things that we wanna keep you updated so that you know the latest and greatest with what's going on. And so when we come to you um, kind of more in the middle of the year asking you about 2025 CIP projects, you kind of have a sense of already what's been going on and um, we don't have to kind of do them as two, two pieces as much. Obviously, we're doing the work plan today, so January is obviously always going to be that one, so we'll just keep that as January. Uh, Vision Zero is now ongoing. We're, we're hiring a new coordinator. Um, she technically actually starts uh, January 22nd, so we're very excited to have, um, and I can't say her name yet, <laughs> but uh, um, she hasn't formally announced to her uh, current employer yet, so I'll let you know as soon as we can tell you, probably at the next meeting we'll introduce her. To them, to everybody, and have her be here. So, we're very excited for that. It's uh, I think you'll be very excited to see um, how this process moves forward after that. Then, microtransit. We brought that up a little bit. Q1 is really to start talking about the. Uh, we really want to have a proposal out there, a request for proposal. Excuse me. And so, we want to make sure that you're aware of that and how that's moving forward. So that'll be uh, quarter number one. You've asked for, at the last meeting, a snow and ice control update. There were some issues with trails and um, maybe it's not as much streets, but trails. So we wanted to give you an update on where we are with snow and ice removal uh, uh, this year, 2024. So that'll be quarter one. That'll probably be March as well. March, April, March. It's gotta be March if it's quarter March. one. <laughs> Or February, I suppose, but we've got a busy February already. Um, and then Q2, we want to talk about, um, start talking, start the discussion on what the ride-free Longmont piece feels like. As far as there's a new fare structure that you've probably heard about in the newspapers. RTD's got this brand new fare structure. We heard about it at their last update as well, but some of you weren't uh, available for that, so or not here at the time. But uh, we think that that new fare structure makes a lot more sense for Longmont. And so uh, we've got a lot of requests from especially the drivers on the routes to please put back a fare system uh, just because they're feeling overrun by people kind of maybe abusing the routes a little bit as far as uh, on and off, jumping on and off without really a, a destination in mind. And, and so there's a little sense from the drivers anyway that there's been some abuse on the system. So we want to bring that up to the TAB first and then take it to city council. We're certainly, uh, you know, as staff, we'll do whatever uh, the policy dictates to move that forward. But we wanted to give you some pros and cons just to let you know where things are. We've been doing this program for about 10 years now. So uh, it's, it's exciting. It was great when it started. It really showed that there was an impediment 
to transit, and that was the fares. And so I think we've proven that out. And now that the fares have come down, first time in history that RTDs lowered their their fares. So we may want to take advantage of that and put that into a system, especially as we roll microtransit out into the city. So this might be one of those things where uh, microtransit is that first and last mile piece that really connects all. But Enough said about all that. We hope that this is something that you uh, feel comfortable with moving forward into the new year. And uh, let us know if you have any questions or comments or additions or subtractions. So thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. I know a lot of effort was, was put into this. And you've made, I think, some of the changes from some of the input from the board prior to this. So we'll just start um, with uh, Council Member uh, Bennett and see if, or board member, sorry. See if there's any uh, comments, questions, uh, or issues. Yes. Um, overall, I'd say that this is a great document. And the only thing that sticks out for me is I want clarification on the sugar mill and steam project, given the voters rejecting the uh, proposal for the entertainment center. I would like to see how that impacts the transit and if it is still necessary for it to be a ongoing update. Yeah, if there, I, I wasn't sure if that was just a comment or a question, but we'll certainly, if we need to, we could just change that to as needed rather than ongoing. Does that help with the direction? Okay, well, we can do that then in the next iteration. Oh. So just a little more information on the sugar mill and the steam. Those projects, while the city has put together a kind of a planning document on it, um, they are, it is developer driven and the city they're, they're particularly with the sugar, the sugar factory area, there are a, a significant number of hurdles to get past. There's wetlands, there's environmental issues, there's a uh, floodplain. So it is not going to be a, a, uh, a quick process to, to begin developing that. And that property on the sugar factory isn't even annexed in the city yet. Um, so there has been a number of, of, of proposals as to what, how that's going to be developed uh, with the Arts and Entertainment Center as only one component of it. Um, but that will be a planning thing, and as, as we note as needed, if we get more information, we'd certainly bring it back um, as those plans develop. Um, <clears throat> well, because I missed last meeting, um, I think one thing I would like to add, and, and I do kind of thank Diane for adding this in the email, the 2022 Dr. Cog report, um, is kind of a little bit of maybe discussion in Longmont's micro-mobility micro um, outlook. And if we could come up with a number of, you know, population and how, how much that's coming through, just so that we can also plan a transit system around that. because. What was interesting from the Dr. Cog report was that that tripled since 2019, um, where driving VMT miles has actually decreased still, hasn't gone above 2019 levels. So I just think it's uh, maybe we're looking at the future of mobility. So I think we should try to be aware of that. Do you want to keep that as an ongoing? Yeah. And we'll just... Slide it under Dr. Cog as a congestion. Yeah, because monitor. I know that you know. I know we talked about B cycle as one avenue, but also there's there's a lot of other um, options out there as well, and and whether people privately own um, their mo mobility options. So that that's all I have. We'll add that, and under Dr. Cog, I think is and micro mobility. We'll throw that in as well. The proposed uh, 2024 work plan looks good to me. Uh, thanks staff for uh, all their 
attention to detail in it. Um, so I wasn't here in December either, as everyone noticed, I'm sure. Um, so I did watch the recording, so I do have an idea of what you discussed last time, which is helpful. I just watched it this afternoon, so <laughs> I'm very up to date. Um, there was one, we had a discussion in the Bicycle Issues Committee um, this last month about uh, maybe presenting here at TAB um, about some issues with signage for the detour. And so I was wondering if maybe we could invite the Bicycle Issues Committee to come and attend and give a presentation to TAB about current bicycle issues like the detour, signs, and any other things that are coming up. Yeah, because it, it felt like we were just kind of going in circles without having a good solution for the sign problems. So, Right, I think the Bicycle Issues Committee also said that they wanted to talk with staff first. Okay. So they've changed a little bit of the direction to meet with staff first, but then we can mix that into this group whenever we need to. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and I think, I think it, you could put it under the bike and pad as needed and maybe add either signage and or issues that come up from the bicycle committee. Oh, um, <clears throat> if maybe we can have an update. I know, I think it's part of the TMP already, but about the bike and ped plan moving forward, because I, I think that's being updated as part of the TMP, but. That's correct, yes. Yeah. Yes, Hopefully we'll hear a lot great. about that on February 1st. Okay, yeah. great. And even later. <laughs> and the bicycle code as well. I think you're updating that too. Okay. So the action item is with, with the changes that we're going to make from tonight and from what's been made that we need to, of course, approve it. So um, I need a motion to uh, approve. I move that uh, the board approve the proposed 2024 work plan. With the changes you discussed. Right. Okay. As amended. And I'll second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so um, Phil, there's no other action items? That's it for tonight, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. So I guess we'll switch it around. We'll start with uh, actually Council Member Yarborough. Give us comments for tonight. <laughs> thank you, Chair. Um, I don't have any actually. Like I said, Happy New Year to everyone and let's make 2024. Um, a better, a better pedestrian friendly year in the city of Longmont. Uh, well, I want to thank staff for their continued hard work. Um, and I look forward to seeing what you're doing in 2024. Thank you for the nomination and um, election as vice chair of TAB. Um, I look forward to taking it on. Hopefully I never have to actually do anything and you'll be here every, <laughs> every meeting. <but laughs> um, I'm sure I'll be fine if you're not here. Um, and since I was traveling again over the winter, I was gone for an entire month this time. I was traveling in France and England. Um, it just kind of always draws my attention to the differences in transportation between the different places. Like it's, so it feels so much more ahead in European cities and it is here. And I would love to see Lamont be like the forefront of making American cities much more similar in terms of transportation, like making <clears throat> light rail very easy and having buses going every five minutes and it would be great to see that in Lamont one day. So that's my long term dream. <laughs> I'm looking forward to working with my fellow board members 
and staff, Council Member Yarborough in 2024. I do have one question. Has um, a TMP steering committee meeting been scheduled yet? There has not been one scheduled yet, formally. We're very close, though. You'll hear, you'll be hearing about this very, very soon within the next two weeks, I believe. So, thank you. Well, I guess I will also say happy 2024. <laughs> Happy New Year. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I had a little dip, bit of different travel in December. I, I went through a lot of America and Canada. And uh, I'll say that there is some actually interesting things going on, uh, especially when we talk about bike and ped safety. So um, I'm really looking forward to a little bit of that discussion of what, uh, what can be done easily and simply and cheaply. So just to get us started. So uh, instead of waiting 20 years. But, uh, but, yeah, I do look forward to a very productive year. Thank you. Yes, um, so happy 2024 as well. And with that, I am excited to see RTD's new fare structure. It'll be exciting to see how that uh, may encourage uh, riders across the Front Range to implement, go and try out the bus system. Likewise, um, on a separate issue for RTD that I have concern about is I recently boarded a ride-free Longmont bus and asked for a transfer and was told that they no longer are accepting transfers. And this was a surprise to me. Um, and so I went to the RTD's website um, as the bus driver said that his manager told him that they are no longer accepting it. And if you look on RTD's website, a updated art, uh, an updated Ride Free Longmont webpage says, as of J January fourth, two thousand twenty-three. So they updated it, still saying that they will accept um, doing transfers upon request, and so, and uh, likewise, it says the same on the Boulder County's website, and so I am confused and also concerned for the drivers as um, this will cause unnecessary frustration um, due to the, the lack of communication on what's happening here. Yeah, just as a, as a follow-up to that, that comment, st staff was not made aware of that issue, but I can, with the elimination of regional routes, so it's all it's all, there's no such thing as a local route anymore. There's no such thing as a regional route. It's just one fare for everything. So I could see that they're now saying, hey, you can't ask for a transfer on a ride-free local bus because that'll get you anywhere in the system for nothing. <laughs> so you could, you know, you could really play the game, I guess, as far as the system goes. And so I'm, I'm wondering if that's not part of it and might be another reason why we need to start talking about bringing back the fair structure so there is some part of that. Yeah, I could see that as well. And ultimately, I just it, transparency is key because it's, it's saying conflicting things on the website um, as well as on this update, so-called updated um, web page. It also says that you can transfer to the L, D, L, X, J, and Bolt, and of that, the L, X, and J have been discontinued for years. This is like over three years. And so, yeah, so I'm just uh, at the very least requesting that RTD update their page. Thanks. That's very helpful for us, and we'll pass that along tomorrow. Thank you. Thanks. Well, um, yeah, Happy New Year, right? I guess we've all said that. Um, and I appreciate all the work, uh, again, that staff does, and, of course, the work by the board, because when we look at the work plan and some of the things, even in the short time that I've been here, it's grown. I mean, we're adding, you know, more modes, and we're talking about passenger rail and, and the light rail. It's, it's actually very exciting that we are at least talking. That means that we're trying to move forward with some of these, these things. I do have one thing that I want to mention, and this is just a little pet peeve on a drive um, on the west side of town. Is Clover Basin at the curve where the Safe Rain School uh, offices are? And 
it almost is as if you've done a little bit of a road diet there. I've noticed there's a lot of folks that are walking on the shoulder, which is perfectly fine. They're pedestrians. But folks are going very fast through that corridor. And because of the bend, they're crossing over into this bike lane. And I've actually seen them go up onto the shoulder. So I'm wondering if there's a chance you could do a driver feedback um, unit or something there, or maybe even a temporary one to tell folks what their speed is. Maybe that would get them to slow down. Because it's 35, and I honestly, I've seen people go 50 through there, believe it or not. Clover Basin in between, um, what would that be, Fordham and uh, uh, Airport. And the other challenge is, is because of the, oops, because of the geometric of the turn, what happens is, is that some folks are turning left into that neighborhood past the school offices. And I've seen some folks really slam on their brakes as well. Just something I've noticed because I, I drive that. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks. We'll take that into consideration and move that along to Kyle and see if we can't get a speed trailer out there yeah. in the short term and just maybe monitor it with some other patrols. Yep. If people are aware, maybe that'll help. So, great. Um, I guess we've gone through our comments. Um, items for the upcoming agenda? Well, good thing we went through our work plan. Plan. I think we talked a little bit about that. So you'll see in February the peak service study piece. We also have um, the snow and ice control. We'll try to figure out if that's February or March. And then the microtransit piece too, just to get you an idea of the scope of work for that. And then the introduction of our new Vision Zero coordinator. Yep. Thanks. Okay. Um, I need a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I'll second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Great. Uh, that adjourns the meeting for tonight. Thank you.